Hey there, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert OET teachers here at e2language.com. What we're going to look at today is some speaking science, and we're going to look at sentence stress. Okay, more specifically, I'm going to introduce to you what sentence stress is. Not stress as in, I'm stressed because I have an exam coming up. Stress is in emphasis, okay? Really placing emphasis on a specific word in a sentence and why we do that. We'll find out about that. We're also going to look at the difference between meaning words and grammar words. This is an important distinction to understand, I think. It's just a good one to have floating around in your mind whenever you deal with language. The difference between meaning words and grammatical words, because there is a difference. And finally, we'll do some practice. Okay, let's do a little task. What I'm going to do is just read you these one, two, three, four, five sentences. The sentences are all exactly the same in terms of vocabulary and grammar, except what I'm going to do is I'm going to place emphasis on a particular word in the sentence to change the meaning slightly, okay? And I want you to listen carefully and see if you can understand and comprehend the change in meaning that comes from the sentence stress. Here we go. John will drive to the cinema tonight. 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 Isn't that weird? So the, all that happened there was I emphasized or placed stress. That is, I elongated the word a little bit, turned up the volume, turned up the pitch, made it a little bit louder, and it kind of changed the meaning, or it gave it additional meaning, I should say. It gave it additional meaning. For example, when I said, uh, John will drive to the cinema tonight, the emphasis there is the place into which, or the place to which John is going. So maybe he's going to the cinema, not the library, for example. Okay? All of this, of course, makes greater sense in a larger context when you're speaking. Okay, let's do a little task. We'll play a little game, shall we? Okay, this time what's going to happen is I'm going to say one of those sentences and I'm going to place stress on uh, one of the words. You have to tell me which one, A, B, C, D, or E. Ready? John will drive to the cinema tonight. Which one did I emphasize? The answer is B. I put emphasis on the word will. Let's do it again. Okay, which one, A, B, C, D, or E, am I emphasizing? John will drive to the cinema tonight. Okay, so we're talking about a split second here. What I'm doing is on that word cinema, so we're looking at D, I emphasized it just ever so slightly to change the meaning or to add additional meaning. Let's do one more. John will drive to the cinema tonight. Did you get it? Hopefully, this time you got C, with the emphasis being on drive. He's going to drive, not walk. He's going to drive to the cinema tonight. Okay? Cool. Let's keep going. So, one thing that you need to understand is that English is a stress-timed language. Basically, there are two categories of languages. There are stress-timed languages, that is, they'll place stress on a particular word, and even within that word, they'll place stress on a particular syllable. So these are stress-timed languages. Maybe your first language is a stress-timed language, or maybe it's a syllable-timed language. That is, there is even stress placed on words and syllables, which is very different to English. And if you come from one of these first languages, a syllable-timed language, and this is really important to understand because it's going to help native speakers of English to understand you when you speak, or if you're taking your exam to get a higher score. Okay, so take a look at these sentences here. Uh, they're pretty straightforward, but they grow in complexity. And what happens is we're adding additional words and we're making the grammar more complex. Now, let's do a little game. This time I'm gonna clap the sentence stress here. I'm going to say, cows eat grass. The cows eat the grass. The cows have eaten the grass. 
The cows have been eating, I can't even clap that fast. The cows have been eating the grass. The cows might have been eating the grass. So what's happening here is cows eat grass is this long. It has this much of a duration, right? Then when I add in these additional grammatical words, which we're gonna look at in a second, the and the again, it maintains the same duration, the cows eat the grass. So I squish in the, the cows. So I don't say cows eat grass, the cows eat the grass. The cows, the grass. The cows, the grass. Whoa, and it's very quick. But then we can even add more complexity to this when I say the cows have eaten the grass. The cows have, eat, have eaten, have eaten, have eaten the grass. The cows have eaten the grass. But I still am emphasizing particular words. Cows and grass, as we'll find out in a second, are meaningful words, so they have more stress. And those little grammatical words like the and have start to sort of almost disappear, or they're really stuck together there. Let's increase the complexity yet again. The cows have been eating the grass. Have been eating, have been eating, have been eating. The cows have been eating the grass. Whoa, that's very quick. And finally, the cows might have been eating the grass. Cows eat grass. The cows might have been eating the grass. Cows eat grass. The cows might have been eating the grass. Try this by yourself. You can pause the video and try to maintain the same duration of time that you spend when you say cows eat grass and then say the final sentence or build up through the different sentences, keeping the same amount of duration. Crazy stuff. Okay, so I touched on before the difference between meaning words and grammar words, and it's important to get a bit of a grasp or to understand fully what that means, okay? So let's take a look at meaning words. Have a look at this sentence here. Sleep is key to good health. Now, what you'll notice when you look at these speech patterns is that meaning words like sleep, key, good, and health have quite a large emphasis. And the grammatical words like is and to have much smaller emphasis, okay? You can also think about this like bricks. If you're building a house, right? You put in the bricks, but bricks, you need more than just bricks. You need the mortar or you need the cement that the bricks go on. So you can think about the meaning words like the bricks and the grammatical words like the cement or the glue that sticks the bricks together. And as such, they're smaller, uh, they're less visible, less oral, you can't hear them as well. So what are meaning words technically? Well, if we look at this sentence, sleep, key, good, and health, we have some nouns and we have an adjective. So nouns, Things, they are meaningful words. If I say them, you see an image in your mind, like table or man or bicycle, etc. These things appear in your mind as images. And also verbs, like uh, main verbs, like walk or make or drive, for example. You can sort of see imagery there of someone driving or making, for example. Also negatives, like don't and can't. Adjectives, which are descriptive words like good, bad, high, blue, whatever. These are descriptions, they also are meaningful. And finally, adverbs with the ly ending, like quickly or slowly or painlessly, for example. These are also meaningful words. Okay, so let's do a little activity. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to look at this paragraph and identify which of the words are meaningful. Maybe you're not very good at identifying nouns and verbs and adjectives, etc. Doesn't matter. Put that aside. Look at these words and think to yourself, which of these have meaning? Which of them provide me with some sort of image? Okay, you have 30 seconds.
Okay, let's take a look at the answers now. So, getting enough sleep, key, good, health, studies, shown, enough, sleep, increases, risk, serious problems, heart disease, scientists discovered, one way, sleep, protects, build up, white blood cells, heart. There's a few little complexities there, like, uh, for example, shown is the participle of show. It's still meaningful. And then we have build up. Actually, the preposition combines with the verb there to make a meaningful verb. Uh, what's it called? A phrasal verb, build up. Hopefully, you pick those out. Let's now contrast that and compare grammatical words, okay? So, if we look at our sentence again, sleep is key to good health. Is and to, is and to don't really form any imagery in your mind. They're sort of meaningless, but they're very important to stick that sentence together, to stick those words together. So, grammatical words consist of or include auxiliary verbs like is and have or do, prepositions like in, on, at, to, for, away from, etc., articles a, an, and the, conjunctions that stick phrases or sentences together like and or though, none of these words have meaning or imagery associated with them. So we can call them grammatical words. Okay, let's look at the same paragraph. I'll give you 30 seconds. Please find the grammatical words. Okay, so the grammatical words in this paragraph are is, to, and, have, that, not, the, of, have, that, against, the, of, in, the. Do any of those words sort of make sense or are meaningful to you? Probably not. In that case, they're grammatical. Okay, let's now do some practice in the context of the OET speaking test, okay? Now that you understand what you're looking at, you understand the distinction between meaning words and grammar words, or content words and function words, which are sometimes called, and we've looked at placing emphasis on particular words. Uh, I want you to firstly listen to me say this paragraph aloud, and then I want you to think about which words you would emphasize. So. Nice to meet you, Matilda. I'm Dr. Lino, and I'll be taking care of you while you're here. Let's start by talking about the pain you've been having in your lower back. I understand it's been getting quite severe in the past few days. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Okay, now that you've heard me do it, please read this paragraph aloud and just be conscious of emphasizing some of those key meaning words. So maybe you emphasized some of these words. Now, I've highlighted a lot here because they're all meaning words, but maybe you just chose to emphasize a few, that's fine. But here are the meaningful words. Nice, meet, Matilda, Dr. Leno, taking, care, here, let's, start, talking, pain, having, lower back, understand, quite severe, past few days, tell more. Cool, so how did you go? Hopefully you emphasized some of those when you spoke. Cool, so hopefully you learned something there about the science of speaking, because it's quite amazing what we do quite, um, what, how can I say this, unconsciously. We don't really think much while we're speaking, it just sort of magically appears, but it is good to be aware of how all of this magic happens, right? And if you do come from one of those languages that I talked about before that is syllable-based and not stress-based, I'm thinking of South Indian languages, for example, 
or I'm thinking about uh, Korean and Japanese. There are lots of them. You can look them up if you like. You will need to think about this particular lesson as well as the word stress lesson in more detail. Anyway, if you need more help with your OET or with speaking, check out e2language.com for test prep. Check out e2school.com for fundamental skill building.